Hello and welcome to another episode of Credit Matters TV. I'm Olaf Fadanzi with S&P's Communications Practice and your host for today's episode. Chris Carey, a director in our financial institutions ratings practice, joins us today to discuss our methodology for rating business development companies. Welcome to the show, Chris. Thank you. So can you tell us how the market for business development companies has grown in the last few years? Yes, absolutely. So business development companies were um, really spawned um, when Congress passed the Small Business Incentive Act in 1980. And they're a vehicle that lend to small and medium-sized businesses. Um, and in, I guess, less than 10 BDCs existed in uh, 2000. And that number has grown to well over 40 today. Um, and we think that one of the big reasons for the growth in this um, segment has been their performance through the uh, credit crisis, um, you know, among other. So uh, we expect this uh, growth trend to continue. So can you tell us some of the key factors we look at when rating these companies? Absolutely. Um, when we rate business development companies, we really look at two, two um, components. The first is the business profile, and the second is the financial profile. The credit strength of business development companies really stem from their structure and their uh, financial profile. The fact that they um, have regulated leverage levels, so part of the regulations that govern business development companies require them to maintain their debt to equity levels at about one to one, which, um, which drives strong credit ratings in addition to them having permanent equity capital um, you know, alongside um, strong earnings coming off of their portfolio. So how do these companies compare to banks, uh, particularly when it comes to risk? Well, um, they're, they're playing in a more risky field than most large banks do, and that's why banks are, are tending to underserve small and medium-sized businesses. Um, but there are three other uh, factors that we look at that uh, differentiate business development companies from banks as well. Um, the first is, as I mentioned earlier, leverage. The second is requirements around asset diversification. Um, there are explicit rules for how a business development company's portfolio needs to be invested in qualifying assets. And then the last reason I would uh, categorize as income and distribution requirements. Um, so many business development companies will also register as regulated investment companies for tax purposes, which require them to make certain distributions of their earnings. Um, yeah. And banks don't really have these requirements. So what's the outlook like for these companies? Then? Well, we, we are uh, pretty upbeat on the outlook for uh, the sector as we think that uh, banks will continue to, to uh, move away from this, this area. Um, and um, as retail investors become more familiar with the sector, we think that it will continue to grow. I think there are two major factors that will uh, impact business development corporations in the future. The first is uh, potential environment where we could see rising rates. And the second is a proposed legislation uh, today, which is referred to as HR 1800, which would um, allow the leverage for business development companies to go from one to one to one to two, uh, which would um, pretty much double the size of the industry today, which is, which is around 25 billion. So that could cause a dramatic uh, increase in the, in the size of uh, activity in this space. All right, well, Chris, thank you for your insights on, on this sector. So we invite you to log on to the Standard & Poor's Global Credit Portal and download our recently published FAQ titled How Standard & Poor's Analyzes U.S. Business Development Companies. Again, thank you for joining us for this segment, and we'll see you next time.